Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Yuslav Yunusov. I'm going to moderate this session, Quantum Effect. Before I make an introduction, I'd like to introduce our speakers. Today we're having Alexei Fyodorov Dosha. He is a, a, scientific, a chief of scientific group of scientific group in the Russian Quantum Center, the youngest specialist in the FISTECH, Smitsy Zamers, chief president, uh, deputy president of the um, uh, Sberbank, Mikhail. Uh, he is in the Gazprom Oil Company, the different quantum projects of Konstantin Khartkovsky, first deputy director of the first analytical center. I'm going to show a presentation on your task. I will task you. We have just discussed if it was it were, it were good that people working in the finances would know that the, the, the stock banks, their employees know pretty well the, the microeconomics, macroeconomics, finances. Oh, but there's a lack. We discussed that they, what is lacking is the knowledge of some other subjects uh, to deal with multidisciplinary areas and these patterns in quantum physics. Perhaps, perhaps it's also lacking because quantum physics might surprise great uh, those who start emerging into it. It might be su surprise you, and we will hear it today. Uh, because the laws it, it's basing is not a part it's not part of our life experience talking about before setting talking about quantum physics raise all your hands who knows what quantum computer is how it comp it works okay so many people are aware I want what I want to say is Friedman said once that if you know that you know quantum physics it means that you don't know quantum physics so you shouldn't have raised your hands as a joke even the physics don't know physicists don't know uh, but think about the questions now you are uh, likely to give to ask us people who don't know what quantum computer is well, i will try to update you on um, this at the level of analogies you know how far we've gone from what how we process information five thousand years ago uh, they invented this kind of uh, and then it, this, that the bait. Now we're dealing with computers. Just imagine what progress we have made. What the way, how long the way we have come. It's been a breakthrough because the, uh, both the computers, supercomputers, is a baker. Supercomputers just stay fast. A baker's nothing has changed. In fact, but the quantum computer is something of a breakthrough because it uses analogic inside. Yeah, supercomputers use the same computers as the Bakers, and the quantum computers use some other type, another type of logic. You can ask Lyosha Fedorov, who is the professor of FISTECH. Such a computer, we're trying to arrange such a computer, to build such a computer as part of the digital uh, state digital program, a special area. Until the 2024, everything has been improved. It's about 100 bits, it should be. It's, it should uh, demonstrate quantum advantage. And Lusha has his own doubts because Lusha has read that some clever people are pu publishing articles if there is quantum if there are any quantum advantages at all, and it might be not a quantum advantage. A superiority. It, about two years ago, Google published an article insisting that they had uh, uh, resolved a, a, the problem for two minutes in the classical IBM summit. IBM summit computer could resolve that problem within 10,000 years. With that three minutes only it took the super quantum computer. And two years later, uh, some other articles have appeared that insisted that a, 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 these problems might be resolved or done faster. What, uh, what is more of interest today, if the quantum computer is required in the future, when it's going to be, it's going to become quite powerful, if it might be of use for the financial sector. What we see here on the one hand is that some tasks we understand that quantum, quantum computer can, and these are different problems of modeling optimization for the financial sector, which is absolutely necessary. Assessment of risks, uh, preventing crisis, if you mis I mean, miscalculate the risks, and, and all those derivatives, uh, their calculation, their assessment, and on so forth. And including, uh, there's another pool of tasks, acceleration of machine education, uh, acceleration and improvement of calculation of credit scoring, loan scoring, credit scoring, 
the one who uh, assesses better, earns more money uh, uh, to protect against fraud, a patterns the fraudsters use are uh, using some algorithmic strategies of trade. And this is the pool of tasks where the uh, machine education is used in quantum, a quantum computer might accelerate, might improve that. Third block is cyber, compu cyber security, how you can protect your information in the financial sector. The financial sector is one of the most sensible, sensitive sectors in the economy. For uh, it's very important for for Rick to keep uh, confidential the information about the, the the clients, about the accounts, and post quantum solutions solutions enable to improve the situation in this area. Our colleagues will tell about that in more detail. These are my have been by my slides. Thank you. I'd like to build this section today on the discussion of something real. On the discussion of something real, we've been talking about finances. Dengue, money. Would you show money to me, Dmitry? Would you show money to me? Thank you, Ruslan, for this opportunity. And in fact, today we have presented together with Alexei and Mrs. Sarif Nabildina uh, quantum calculations and assessment. We have shown this and we made a big impact pressure upon the people, especially its application in the sphere of cyber security is becoming more and more realistic. Let me show you this slide at the end. Ruslan has said that, in fact, quantum computer, quantum computer, he didn't say that it, it, we can uh, proceed, it, it, it presupposes it might be resolved, uh, problems of optimization efficiently all the banks in fact are uh, big optimization calculators and problem uh, problem seekers and and calculate how to optimize the passives and actives and assets of the banks and and how about how it resolve to optimize the tasks of profits and income from how to resolve the problems connected with yields, financial yields, and all that. No, it can be used with machine education, but at the same time, we all know that to find that global optimum is impossible. A, a, no classical models can, can find that in computer. If the computer learns to resolve that in a more efficient way, from the point of time, from the point of efficiency, it might take a decision, or from the point of efficiency of models of those models and methods as can be obtained as an economic effects and tradition and for all the financial organizations most uh, the biggest task for uh, is to optimize the portfolios in Natasha we're sitting here together with the colleagues we have looked at a quantum algorithm distant remote algorithm that is shown without a computer that shows that those models of optimizing the portfolios in the night and the worst um, implemented in the 1990s. They are working better on some other models, algorithms. We don't need a quantum computer, but the research to do that. What, the, uh, what, what is possible today is to improve the models of financing the automobile making in chemistry of new materials. And uh, the future is tremendous. If, uh, as soon as the quantum computer is developed, we, can, we will be able to assess the effects obtained one from using that quantum computers. I will show the international banks that are having experiments with quantum technologies. I won't give all of them. You can see them here on this slide. In this slide, practically everything is connected with optimizing the portfolios. The cost of assets uh, is about optimization of the portfolio, optimization of the calculation of logis logistical tasks. If we have a look, we'll see the, we'll see the biggest banks in the plenary session, which was the first one, Mrs. Nabiodana and get Mr. Gremlin Griff, we all understand, we all agree with the idea that the financial systems of Russia is the most digitalized, the most state-of-the-art system in the world from the point of B2C segments and B2B segments. And I skipped one slide in the beginning on the Gazprom Bank. In fact, it's not only a gas bank, the biggest gas bank, it's the most quantum connected and based bank because from 2014, we as investors, as a Don, don, finance donors will be supporting quantum technologies, quantum based centers in the country. And practically all of them were trying to, to test all of them. In 2016, we demonstrated in our own channel this a data center of one of the banks to uh, quantum based protection uh, of hardware, uh, key distribution. 
And now we have implemented our pilot projects for the, uh, one of our clients in methods of quantum cryptography, a method that will enable to, enables to protect completely against threats of a quantum computer when it's in place, when you see it in place and working. At these banks, they optimized and tried to use the algorithms that are enable to improve optimizing the portfolios of investments and all this it's clear that it's just minor pilot projects and they have a tremendous future because we don't know when the quantum computer is developed and the, when the quantum computer is developed is in place all well, the cryptographic will go to the abyss because because it's been proven that algorithm al quantum algorithms are capable of cracking symmetric keys and that uh, mathematical complexity that is in keys can be broken can be hacked by using the state of the art technologies now which we should try to protect ourselves against it right now this is and this has an imaging effect image effect because the bank preserves this information keeps the data about the clients and may, may exp it makes it possible for the bank to preserve the transactions keep secret and confidential transaction for example china has built a network of protected between Shanghai and Beijing, about 2,000 kilometers. There's a lot of nodes that involve the biggest banks, and all those principal transactions are performed by using only this network, this network. And quantum technologies is a tool of breakthrough and a tool of protection, and especially in this current situation, given all the cyber threats we're facing, the protection of critical infrastructure which involves the financial infrastructure is one of the most important tasks. That's why the Gazprom Bank believes in this, believes in the people and believes in these technologies. And we can make a lot of efforts and spend a lot of time into this, into developing these projects. This may be in my introduction. You said that there's going to be a big quantum computer and the entire system will collapse. And if it collapses, we, don't, we won't be updated. It hasn't collapsed even during the World War II when the system of encrypting, uh, machine encrypting, uh, uh, Hitler, the Hitlerites developed, it uh, uh, collapsed, but no one knew about that, the British didn't know where those U uh, boats were located. But they hear now the same situation, the computer, one computer, that computer appears, and the system will collapse, we won't be updated on that. That's why we need to invent, invent kind of a forestalling algorithm this is where i i want to ask alexei to tell us about these algorithms how difficult it is to get them implemented to get them installed what is required to do that yeah. if it is about service quantum service and all that what else thank you for the question and it's really discussion this a discussion about the quantum technologies it can be carried out in the terms of what is ready what is five years ago we were trying to convince our colleagues that the quantum technologies are going to be implemented we need to develop them they need to test them across several areas quantum technologies are ready some quantum technologies are ready for industrial implementation it's about instruments of quantum security the mutual image has said correctly that when we have that quantum quantum computer ready made it will carry risks and threats for information security and those both methods um, of the security information security protection we're using every day when we enter when we go and, and uh, on to the cyberspace we see that our information is protected uh, not against the quantum algorithms there was an article recently published uh, the, this was called the day when the cryptograms will die the quantum cryptography and its stability is based upon fundamental uh, physical laws and the fact that the information is encoded in some single quantum objects and the, it's, it's about the distribution or uh, the distribution of just normal optical connections uh, uh, between online we can distribute information between on um, distant uh, users in such a way that this information could not be hacked this technology has got, uh, come a long way now it's ready to be industrially implemented you can go establish put it install it and together with the, your encrypting equipment and it would it can enhance your work enhance your equipment it's kind of a box if it can be placed inside of a, a smartphone your mobile phone 
right now. It's conscious and not ready, but they are uh, working towards it to protect the final user. They have algorithm, algorithms. And we need to manufacture a big mobile phone. The colleagues that have co uh, come along that way have that big telephone, and it, in order to implement the, it into it, we have the post quantum algorithms. There's such an interesting game, uh, game for it and algorithms, classical algorithms, uh, but they're built proceeding from the supposition that the villains, fraudsters, have a, a quantum computer. You can show if that quantum, even if that quantum computer starts working. These quantum algorithms, post-quantum algorithm, stay to be stable. And together with the Constant Bank, we are trying to implement those quantum algorithms into a computer structure. And the integration uh, of software solutions is much more simple. Some t die, we can wake up and see this quantum technology is working. This might be the main answer to the challenges of, of, uh, of uncontrolled quantum computer and its activities. We will know about that, we will learn about that, or in fact, there's an idea, uh, the idea of post-quantum algorithms that at the expense of uh, its internal workings is kind of a clock that can tell that someone uh, uh, has already that quantum computer. There's such hypothesis that it can be proven by uh, using correctly quantum computer. The attack has been done. According to the pattern, the a normal computer cannot, is not able to perpetrate. We have thought about that with my colleagues, but at the moment when we, we eliminate that threat, what quantum it becomes? Quantum, together with the colleagues, we're working on the uh, quantum computer to be used in financial sector so that the physics shouldn't go to the banks and take those data and kind of reprogram that quantum computer. There's people who just could, they're using by those instruments they know, for example, they could uh, uh, make this quantum library work and re resolve those practical tasks. As Islam has mentioned a lot, and it's not only prototypes that are used, used and analyzed, and, and they are further to be developed. What I want to say at the end, I want to say that the financial sector is not the only industry that is uh, working with this uh, oil and gas industry representatives that are pioneers in Russia in terms of quantum calculations. And it's not only about quantum and digital fintech. Uh, uh, those oil and gas producing companies can also be quantumized and digitalized. Uh, well, we should be prepared if quantum technologies are our future. We shouldn't, we can't ignore them. We, need, we should uh, uh, use them. We need to have specialists who know what are uh, quantum technologies patterns, what they look like and how to work with them. Together with my colleagues, to, uh, we're working in the hub of sub HCB. Uh, we provided the course, more than 400 people listen to the course, we're updated, and we can make that scaling. That's when we can enhance that uh, knowledge and awareness. And they're very simple, I think. It's a bad central bank is regulating so that everyone should pass, take and pass exams on quantum, quanta. How real it is it? How real is it to do something in the regulatory system connected with the quantum? It's not about exams, taking exams. It's about having a qualified investor. And in fact, you mentioned the Chinese experience. It's not an ac accidental that this particular thing. It, it's not the banks that invented that. It's what is important is the position of the regulator. In fact, it's open, the, uh, not only central bank, but the bodies that regulate the, the different industries and activity, industrial and business activities in them. What is important is, to, uh, would be important is implementation of the standards. Uh, according to them, a critical infrastructure uh, should be protected uh, by quantum technologies. It would make tremendous progress in those industry, in this industry, uh, both as uh, developers of such technologies and clients that don't believe in that for some reason. They should think that they shouldn't think uh, about that because they shouldn't spend money on that. It's irresponsible from my point of view. We should think ahead. It's about our clients, about our infrastructure and this protection. So it's about redundancy, which, for example, the, the, for example, the number of risks for redundancy is much higher, much bigger. And the, we can use in this way, the United States of America have been gone along this way, all the state, all the state uh, organizations, agencies, all the corporations should use it. And these activities, this, they have all the first 
they worked out algorithms and they were the first to have uh, developed those algorithms and it was it, that bill was signed by the president that everyone should uh, transfer should move to use the cryptography it's not ours it's not our okay uh, well, really interesting that we have had cases connected with not only banking, with the Gazprom Nips, who is one of the pioneers of free revisiting, reconsidering the patterns, why one quantum computer is required, is needed. We understand that the computer is small, although it's working, and say, okay, it's right, now nothing good had can be done. But if we, we deal with a big computer, this is when we will come to our senses and start thinking about how to use that, because it's a big job. It's a big effort to make. It's not, it's like you can't write a develop operating system system just uh, in the jiffy and the colleagues from Gazprom Neft company they're thinking actually about how to do and what to do in terms of that uh, for in terms of those quantum computers that they were having a financial session but we asked a uh, an own guest industry representative to participate and when we were thinking what to discuss at this session uh, the idea came up to us that uh, many tasks turn out to be to have a very similar patterns of solutions and this uh, idea came up that our colleague from Russian Quantum Center Yulia Shadilo uh, went to Harvard then she to work and then she uh, went to Moody then she was busy calculating different equations those centers yeah, she uh, came to the Moody's and the same equations were to be resolved, to be calculated, to be done. Okay, hydrodynamics, there are some hi financial hydrodynamics. And my question to Mikhail, what uh, uh, you, uh, you see in what you are calculating, what makes sense uh, to share with, uh, with your colleagues from the financial sector when something similar is taking place? I want to say, tell about the principles we should use in approaching those tasks. We all understand that quantum computer is not all uh, is not for all the problems. It's very a very important comment. Everyone thinks that the quantum computer resolves all the resolve is destined to resolve everything. Of course not, not everything. But there is a set of tasks and problems. It is quantum superiority. It's an attempt to single out the class of group of tasks a quantum computer will be able to resolve to find solutions to uh, within the uh, foreseeable time. And because normal computers, common computers, are not able to resolve that those tasks and this is a principle a significant advantage if we find the solutions to these tasks with quantum computers by using quantum computers <coughs> yeah, we started from the fact that we started seeking the oil and gas companies have very different different types of multitasking uh, business and we started to look for search for six such problems and to resolve them and uh, there were three of them a group of tasks and problems one group is about different groups of optimization the other one is for physical modu modeling and simulation and the third one is about chemical modeling if we answer the question of course, given by Islam, what is common? We can have a look at the class of tasks and problems. We can start from optimizing because banks deal with lots of optimization because the companies are involved in finding solutions to lots of tasks and problems. The entire activities are built around optimization of of the sense of that process. If there are some, you need some examples. The first example, the portfolio optimization banks in the bank. Portfolio optimization is about optimizing some assets, and the oil and gas company has many assets that need to be optimized. For example, at the level of licensing, licensed area sites, because the whole country is divided into the whole world is divided, cut, uh, sliced into licensed areas. We have a portfolio of these licensed areas. And what uh, the question, if we should uh, fight for these, or it doesn't make sense to enter, to try to fight for these. And some other areas, is such, uh, and this is how this uh, task of portfolio optimization, for example, oil, oil, well, oil, well, for example, any oil company, they operate several Th uh, several thousands of wells in every well each well is an invest investment pro project and every time we invest and that's it and forget about that but the reg on the regular basis we have to complete to add investments and this is uh, what engenders for example uh, those problems if we should uh, drill completely or we should do the fracking work and 
and all this additional drilling, and this is another investment project, and there's a portfolio around any, every wall. Well, we, we should control those portfolios. This is one, just one example of the common approach, logistic tasks and problems, for example. An oil company and logistic company, and they have their own problems, and they are quite very complicated, and in any combinatory digital problems are very much sophisticated. Quantum computer uh, just promises us certain breakthrough. For example, we heard today about the problem of optimal location in the territory, and oil and gas companies are faced with the problem of optimal location of a well. This kind of a map of drilling should appear wells influence upon each other because there are some interflows and some flows are uh, attract some clients and there's a territory where we should locate our wells and this is for qu uh, an interesting problem for a quantum computer because it's about optimizing all the tasks because they turn out to be quite sophisticated then we discussed that we have lots of physical modeling simulation for example hydrodynamic seismic and all, all those normal physical problems banks don't have anything of the kind it seems right but in fact if we have a, if we do something what we do and and we single out kind of quantum core any problem has an introduction, uh, entrance, or exit. It's not a, for a quantum computer, because classical computer, it does that pretty well. But the, in the middle of these tasks, what we see is a, a problem that's quite simple. It seems to be simple, but at the same time, it can be resolved in a, a simple way. This quantum core, the, if we talk about the physical simulation quantum area, quantum core is the algebra, algebraic problems. And if the matrix is pretty big, the uh, problems are resolved very, very badly. And it turns out that this linear algebra, the level of linear algebra, the banking and all companies have a lot of commons, they share a lot of common common. For example, we heard about that problem, regression, uh, that is resolved with involving a linear matrix, algebra matrix. And it turns out that there's a lot of uncommon if we have a look at this quantum core sounds like banks banks and the oil companies have a lot lots in common if we make you make progress in your developments they might say be involved in you and oil and gas will, are not going to be uh, required just money is about earning money it's kind of a service company service-based company that would resolve all those problems Thank you. Thank you, Constantine. We are discussing about technology, we're discussing technology, some solutions. In every way, we're talking about quantum computers that might be needed in service servers, connected with quantum computers that are, might be needed, required. It's an logical that if an industry occurs, a new industry, because it, it people, new people, new specialists will be required. I know that you have considered a, a problem how to understand uh, a to demand in quantum specialists can you tell us and then we will discuss in a free way perhaps if you can so today a lot has been said about quantum calculations now the area we've been working in is quantum communication and we we, ha we should have reminded the organizations that have been endowed with tasks set, tasked with resolving those problems. This is the case. So today a lot has been said about quantum cans, quantum calculations, the area we've been working in is quantum, about quantum communication. And we should have remi reminded the organizations that are a tests with developing and developing in certain areas and this is that's a company the russian railroads company that is the operator of the road map in developing railroads and that has been involved in developing a respective infrastructure and including those connected with formation of ecosystems for organizations that are involved in developing quantum based technologies and we've been doing this research as part of our work and I'd like to share some results with you. We're presented from the fact that the, this is a new area. We have developed a methodology uh, where this uh, personnel 
uh, we made that uh, forecast at the end of the year regarding the occupancy with the personnel and we're conducting that research as part of that work and I'd like to share the results with you. We proceeded from the fact that the the area is new and we developed a methodology uh, according to which this uh, personnel provision was assessed at the end of last year. We uh, provided that for a case until the year 2025 and this year we will see the uh, ECI search updated uh, that will uh, specify the uh, personnel provision until the 2020, year 2025. We've, we've, been working, we've been working with different organizations belonging to different categories. And and I'd like to say that we've been working not only with developers and quantum communication technologies, we also talk to the companies and communicate with the companies that potential users, consumers in the banking or agencies, state bodies, state and public bodies, and uh, defense complex systems and different point of customers. And what I want to say is, in contrast to post quantum cryptographic, quantum communication needs a certain infrastructure and the problem of modeling or uh, a model of using quantum technology is one of the most prioritized and what is that has been done the two we took two main hypotheses regarding using, using these technologies if we talk about some major state companies for example might concern concern the ministry for defense and some other uh, similar companies, they are interested in creating their own infrastructure. In some cases, they are de interested in developing uh, their own solutions and education of specialists and training specialists uh, to concentrate on some local tasks and some local problems, say, from the point of ge geography, from the point of locations of those tasks and problems. And in doing that, about 85% of those organizations we, we have communicated with we sent them about 1,000 requests and different companies, different companies, they converged that they were ready and they were interested in using those quantum uh, uh, technologies, communication technologies, first of all, in service-based models. And this is when this infrastructure should be accumulated that should provide secure a necessary level of protection of your information. We should build the quantum networks and around this model we have uh, we just uh, develop our forecast we have gone, covered all these organizations companies we understand several positions and first thing that the quantum communication is not going to be implemented very easily as a post quantum cryptography that there are models where the uh, end user will be burdened to less extent to least extent from front of uh, preparation uh, training new specialists and opening positions in their agencies with specialists uh, high, having higher qualification, highest qualification. A matrix has been set up or developed with, with, with the, considering the, all the demands of specialists in different organizations. We have some numerical assessment uh, assessments and we will try to show that picture which we see now, we have now, we understand that. that the organization of consumers of these services from the point of this and the services and the quantum communication services areas. What is important is a retraining of all this requalification of all the specialists that have been involved in existing IT infrastructure and the infra in IT infrastructure that provides protection for data transfer operations. It should be provided with vendors with their and system integrators and vendors have a number of companies that have appeared recently that are involved in developing solutions. Uh, they have shown part, part of solutions ready made and a few weeks ago a very important event took place. The first certified solution appeared on the, on the side of regulatory, regulatory bodies in terms of quantum technologies and regulation and this is the step all the market had been waiting for in order to enter a new usher in a new stage of their development. We well, understand that the main demand for this personnel was in specialists with higher highest level of qualification next steps we're forecasting for the next steps a bigger demand for all those who are supposed to operate those solutions and implement those solutions and uh, major problems main problems have been singled out and determined that are challenging quantum co communication area the first problem is lack of uh, specialists of the highest level of qualification this is a problem for the scientific research organization, organizations and uh, developers of such solutions. And from year to year, 
We see some positive trend progress in this part made in this area. We understand that the, this problem uh, um, uh, this problem has been uh, becoming less difficult, less complicated, and it's, the second thing is about the professional standards as we do the, doing this work as part of this roadmap program. Uh, I mean, there's colleagues from the SPK uh, uh, company, and I hope we will see the standards in the near future. Uh, the same can be said about the Ministry for Education and Higher, Edu uh, higher Education. Regarding implementation of those education standards, the next position is a lack of the market and novelty of the technologies, which is, as I said, uh, the first certified solution appeared a uh, short time ago on those companies that by now have had, have obtained ready-made solutions. They are doing it as a startup, as kind of an introduction and in terms of those people who, uh, those companies, businesses that are investing into this. And without this step, the de any development of the market uh, might have been impossible. At the next stage, we are expecting these solutions to start uh, to start to be scaled, and uh, those market solutions that can work with these data uh, will are likely to open that market and transform this market. So there are problems of growing deficit of specialists uh, working at the interdisciplinary areas. And right now, at this moment of discussion, we heard is uh, about the quantum communication, quantum computer, how it works. And the problem is the same. It uh, can be told of, uh, by a sales manager. The same story can be told by a sales manager. And uh, the company, sh the uh, manager, technical specialist should hear that his work that is involved in the bank or state public company. They should work and communicate and uh, use the same language. And the information should be rammed home, as strange it might seem. It's one of the most serious, significant problems that the companies share in terms of uh, working out those uh, communication technologies from point of the personnel specialists to obtain a certain number of specialists who might be involved in, tr in sales and same time they could be able to tell professional at professional level what quantum uh, computer quantum communication is and the next is uh, this technological development will cause the changing in changes in pr the proportion of specialists and currently the f first problem I announced that we lacked the specialists of highest level. Next stage, we're supposed to uh, have specialists of lowest level. But it's about it's a problem. It's a matter of special education and educational programs of a special type. And I should say that the operators of communication, communication operators, currently are um, two organizations. There's the common trust, the common companies. They've been actively on this in this area. And. For example, colleagues from the Strikov company have created their own program of training, professional training, corporate tr pro training program at, uh, at the end of this year. But the end of this year, uh, several thousands of their employees have been trained, have received that training already, according to the program. And it is not going to be uh, sufficient to work with this solution, but they are making a, a leap forward in order to work uh, with all those problems in the future and from the point of those problems that are challenging the market on the whole and the, our research covered not only specialists and personnel but uh, and it's about forecasting it was about forecasting market developments and of com market communicate of communications that we single out those pro pro problems that are challenging the markets of communication given that it's almost practically impossible to make quality forecast of a specialist that might be demanded without understanding how the market will be developing and problems say it is likely to be f to face different organizations uh, have different companies that different problems and this different categories of pro companies have different problems so that is highlighted here and we understand that this what is serious now is it is serious challenges those restrictions that are imposed on a, a high tech import and we understand that that might be one of those serious problems for the banks that they will need to will have to resolve because the, our colleagues some colleagues are going the way of import substitution it's going to be one of those important uh, issues of uh, implementation of quantum technologies i'm ready to answer your question questions before we start answering question the questions the audience likes to hear some forecast in terms of time, and the speakers don't like to uh, provide such forecast. And the FINA policy, again, this conference, 
Let's get back to the regu regu regulation when we when some regulatory documents it will have its word quantum in any documents. As far as I know, they have already appeared in some documents. No, it's not only in the financing, financing documents in central banks, for example. The central banks not about cryptographic, but it's about. I think what is realistic is the kind of standards in 2023 that it would appear in 2023, the Google Digital, uh, how to connect them. Also, what do you think? I also think that it's not one point. It's in it will it appeared in the brains first in people's minds and the scales and the possible consequences. And then I will support that in 2023, 2022. At the level of separate companies, this quantum security issues have already been uh, uh, worked on, and it's a big step in the, oh, in the Finnopolis way. It will happen in alliance of companies in the financial sector that are thinking about how to protect their data on quantum-based technologies. Quantum ruble, this is the word that has appeared uh, uh, tomorrow. At the, at the next session, I will propose that. And as it... Uh, as it as can happen, we have been discussing a, a implementation of quantum protection for the digital ruble. Today, officially, we have begun our friendship today, officially, and our colleagues from the FinTech are helping us and uh, to work on the strategy of development of master chain and all those products connect with the uh, distributed ledgers, with the, given the, into account the threats. There's a, an idea, wide, widely used idea, that widely shared idea that these uh, technologies are protected and everything is challenged with cryptographic. Cryptography, there's a, uh, but uh, can we, can anyone fake those signatures of quantum computer? Those cryptocurrencies, distributed ledgers, we should go there, uh, uh, considering the necessary protection of quantum solutions. Uh, I heard some news, I read about some news that the, some cryptocurrency stock exchange falling it's not because of you they're falling that the Chinese China wants to control 84 percent of uh, cryptocurrency in the world which is not a bad idea thank you colleagues dear colleagues let's and uh, try to answer those questions from the audience or comments you might disagree with as a banker I have a classical question it's clear that in theory, we understand that there are algorithms that are very fast, uh, that are much quicker result of quantum by quantum computers, but there are some specific problems that are calculated much cheaper uh, by quantum computers. This is uh, a, a task of a quantum advantage, a superiority provided by the, using quantum technologies. There's a problem connected with the time of calculation, calculations are performed. And from the point of energy, uh, energy consumption, the cost expressed through energy costs and the value expressed through energy costs and economic effect from using al quantum algorithms uh, have not been recorded so far, that there are some forecasts. There are some forecasts quite realistic, quite optimistic from my point of view. And it's about economic effect uh, can be obtained by using from using quantum computers. It uh, is going to be, it's likely to be a quantum educational machine, quantum education machine. It's going to be machine learning based uh, education and teaching problems that need to be resolved, done. And one of the tasks, for example, in uh, producing ammonia where 22% uh, is spent in the world because of the inefficient chemistry, chemical process and impossibility of uh, getting those chemical reactions go faster. We have a number of tasks, a number of problems. We are just want, we are just expecting, and we just want to have a big quantum computer built. And time is money, as you know. The acceleration in itself gives money, a huge money, and and especially uh, it is, if it is about if we talk about several billions of euros, uh, dollars. Uh, a lot of our tasks in trying to resolve the business effect occurs when some process gets accelerated in quantum computer and accelerates tremendously the process of taking decisions. 
And all this is converted into money, and, and these money is quite real. And all the uh, digitalization is going around that, or precision, for example, because if you can uh, afford to, uh, to do a very complicated task or a problem instead of infinity, when the, which it takes for a normal computer, there's a joke that if people, many people have lost, because of Bitcoin, have uh, lost the keys to their crypto wallet, if there's such a, a quantum computer is developed and it might retrieve all those bitcoins if the, if the bitcoin does not collapse has not collapsed by the time when that quantum quantum computer is ready and is provided any more questions okay let's what to tell you repeat all the time keep repeating the quantum, what a computer is developed uh, my question is about to, uh, about the spartans you remember that if 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 there are any reasons, grounds for this quantum computer to be developed, what makes you be so sure? If, 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 if we, when we move from the if word if to the word when, it's quantum. This idea of quantum will be having a quantum center came about ten years ago, and everyone was told that in ten years' time, when if we ask people when this uh, super power, powerful uh, quantum computer will appear, and it's ten uh, in ten uh, years, there is such a forecast predictions that their first quantum computers that are um, rivaling with the most supercomputers develop, ever developed by men. This is a real race competition, this minor chip, uh, tens of uh, bits uh, there, we have them. Uh, when this starts resolving practical problems, this is an issue, a question. Uh, specific roadmaps, we see a roadmap in Russia and uh, globally also. And such big companies, Google and IBM, they're promising not five qubits, they are uh, promising a tons of millions of cubic of cube of uh, bits. It's very serious, and it's not if it's a when about when they uh, keep telling that about in about five years they will show you something interesting. Can't believe it, can't disbelieve it. The horizon is getting. Uh, yesterday they announced about uh, uh, 433 qubits. What has been created is a quantum computer. Is really quantum computer? That's a very important uh, question. The answer is that what is, has been created now is shown as a, as a quantum computer. When we say that it's small uh, but powerful at the same time, what is left to do is uh, make it bigger. If physics is right, implementation is quite complicated. There's a lot of engineering problems to be resolved in front of physics. The entire world has shown, has seen that when we go and say the quantum computer about quantum computer, we never hear people say, hey, come on. These are fairy tales. It will never happen, and this conception is wrong. Talking about the conception, we have quit those questions. We have abolished them. We have explained them. I'd like to cover the, the aspects of believing in future of technologies and the future of technologies. A lot. Uh, it, it can be developed. Uh, it depends a lot about if it can be uh, developed in the 50s and 1950s. No one was going to develop classical computer by using transistors. They were doing that to enhance the signals in telecom. But the way gun until now uh, is been done by people who invested in their time in the technologies that who believed in those technologies uh, uh, want very much it to concentrate if when microelectronics uh, was missed this opportunity was missed in the 1990s with everything connected with microelectronics then we will catch up on later on okay getting the quantum we are we are lagging behind as a country, but we are not lagging behind uh, that uh, greatly. We shouldn't quit, we shouldn't um, drop quantum technologies, we shouldn't do that, because uh, uh, our future of this country depends on that, and competitiveness, competitive edge depends on that. Quantum computer should be and is likely to be performed, uh, we developed it, it's not if, it's when, it's about when. Hello, dear colleagues, Vladimir Golov, Bank of Russia, thank you for your interesting section. I have participated to see, especially on your uh, to see your technologies, to hear something new about that. It's quite a cheering, um, invigorating uh, session. And the question is, a lot has been said about the development, about where 
we are in this country. Well, you were talking about, about the American program, one, two, and I want to ask where we are in the world. Uh, is it a catching up development or overtaking development if we're leaders? And this all, and all the rest keep, uh, pr uh, depends on us. This important question: if when you are asking about the where were I, what time do you, are you asking about it now? About now or about ten years on? And let's talk about now and let's talk about ten years on. You, Dosha, will you take the floor because you are a professor. Let me add something to the. Uh, I was involved in our roadmap development when we try to assess where we are, and shortly we are lagging behind in some areas. And some areas where leaders, and for example, talking about quantum qualification, communication, technical culture, speed, and distances, we are competing with the leading world companies. Talking about quantum calculations, we are lagging behind somewhere. Somewhat, we're trying to be the first in some areas. For example, new approaches, new architecture to be tapped, uh, to be implemented. The ideas are ours and technologies are, is global quantum computer. If we take it in a laboratory, it's kind of a globe. You can find developments for ultra stability system for lasers. The laser itself, a Russian and the laser itself, those might be from Japan, the optics might be from China, and something might come from America. And the technologies of quantum computer is 100% Russian. We are inventing how to assemble from what components a classical computer. When you assemble this, you can uh, collect components and perform a design of uh, motherboard, design of the processor, and then the technology of how it works is yours, even if the factory that manufactures diodes in China, a processor in Taiwan, is conditionally yours, it belongs to you. But the Apple, for example, doesn't manufacture anything, but the technologies of the iPhone and processors, it, it's owned by this Apple company. The technology of quantum computers are manufactured here, I developed here, are purely Russian. A, and if there are many components that are Russian components, not a, just a few, but there are subtasks, some problems that might cause, might result in that in the percentage of localization to grow. And uh, something I wanted to say is who is the leader? You can ask this question to ourselves and you, uh, we can think of the United States of North America and, and one of the leaders is possibly is China. Yeah, because China has overtaken the United States in, in, in terms of number of patents and in terms of speeds of implementation, China is competing with the United States of America. This is what we know, and I, I believe it might be. We might discover something, many uh, lots of interesting, but it is not accessible now. We should work here in this area and try to make, to, to make our hardest to uh, uh, not to miss this uh, wagon. In, if we, uh, one, I want to add, if you know everything about China, that we don't know everything about China, you never know about that in China. State, given that the state finance is the main story, Chinese story, state fi provided, finance provided by the state in China, we went, traveled to, with a delegation to uh, the leader of the Chinese quantum program, which happened four or five years ago. And at some moment, we said that they were developing quantum computer at 20 qubits, and we they said that the, we could uh, manufacture, but don't enter that room, don't enter that room, and this you can enter this room, and the Google was manufacturing 50, 50 qubits, and I asked them, how, when are you, you are going to catch up on the Google, and they gave a serious answer. Uh, you should have said something neutral in three years' time. Uh, we didn't believe, uh, and in three years' time, in reality, Google showed the quantum superiority, and the, within a year's time, Chinese showed a more powerful version of quantum Google for quantum computer. And now, because uh, if all the published the solutions published, uh, this is China who is the leader. If talking about the answer, the question, if we know everything now, negotiations are underway with the Chinese that are ready somehow. To sell 64 qubit quantum processor, they are ready to sell this to you. I said this is the maximum they uh, can publish. What do you think if they are ready to sell? If they have any uh, any kind of, if they keep any other solutions in store, because no one is selling the la latest generation of this equipment. This is my uh, ideas about where China is, uh, which what China has reached. Any more comments? Any more questions? The first row, please. 
Thank you, Kuzmichov. Master Chen, in con to continue the previous questions, the provocative question, if there are, the ideas are Russian, but how much they uh, they are authentic and patent, uh, patent, 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 uh, and how much they are patent, patentable, uh, can be patentable in the future, in the near future. It's a good question, first of all, before Losha will tell us something about patent, some ideas. Uh, cannot be or should not be patented at the level of know-how they stay at the level of know-how because we should understand that there's some authentic uh, solutions there's quantum uh, computers on ions and they have uh, make made a breakthrough over the last several years that's clear even we friends Elias Milikov told me that that he was going about what he was going to do and he even brought me and then he showed to me that you see this has been working why didn't you tell me I asked him because once it's another interesting case about Elias Milikov, Elias Milikov. Today they told us about the problems resolved in the financial sector. One of them was resolved in the pro on the INQ I own processor based processor INQ is the first dollar unicorn that a appeared about two or three years ago. Quantum, and they made that computer for the, they were the first to made have made that computer on the I own. The project was supervised by Chris Monroe, a very good scientist and post doctor, of, uh, and. And one of the conference, Elias Merikov reported some idea. A young guy, we have a young, that's a young guy. He is 13, his early 30s. It was three or four years ago. They reported his idea. He comes up to Chris Monroe and asks, see, Chris Monroe said, okay, it's, I know how it works. And it won't work. And he wouldn't do that in half a year's time. And I read an article, got an article, some uh, newspapers that they said it has been implemented by Chris Monroe. Uh, perhaps I would say that, that fundamentally where it makes sense to patent some uh, common solutions. You are learning to how to patent patenting in this area, and this is an interesting process in itself, and you can uh, fix some architectural solutions. Might This question might be given to Mikhail because we are working with commercial companies, and it's hard possible that if we develop quantum algorithms of uh, trying to find solutions on quantum algorithms, it might it might make sense, it might not make sense to uh, partially uh, patent to the Mikhail, for example, in oil and gas industry, for example, not only in banking. It's a complicated question. It depends on what we are doing that for. If we do it, doing it for, to sell it, it's a complicated process. If for the inter some internal consumption to be more competitive, in fact, in reality, we've been doing a lot for internal consumption. We're not patenting anything about your con con consuming. We do. We are consuming a different philosophy. These are different philosophies. The most important thing is to do something in order to increase, enhance internal efficiency. What is going on around in the outer world? That's not our business. To, pay, to get patented is none of us has patented anything. We haven't banned you to do uh, what way to do what we invented ourselves. It's about for the quantum communication for area, for example. It might be patented that this area Russia has full of international patents, including those that could enable to use them legally and to show that we have such a such a solution. But the sense it does make sense to open the com complete. Uh, group of all those a uh, conglomeration uh, of those patents you might read about the Chinese patents American patents they ascribe some common principles with, with a lot of black boxes I saw, I saw such a patent a, a universal body universal quantum optimizer that's one pater just one patent has been recorded if we talk about quantum analysis we've done we ran such an analysis we compared with China for example and the United States especially with China we see quite a significant lagging we don't go into details and figures what i'd like to state is that from the period from 2016 15 2015 16 we, we see an exponential growth of number of uh, uh, applications for patents and we understand that these are the results of those implementation of those programs and initiatives implemented at the level of operators of the roadmap and uh, leading universities and those developers of solutions that are supported by leading companies. It's about different cultures of the countries. The Americans just think of this and get patented. And the Chinese have learned lessons 
I don't know, I'm not sure if the, the number of patents is good, the, how good those patents are, if the, all the patents are good. If it, uh, when everyone keeps talking about patents in order to protect your investments, a very important factor. But in this country, a reverse mechanism is working. When uh, some scientific work is implemented as a result, the patent occurs and it gets patented for and for a state organizations. What's that balance cost and value of these results? As a result, we have problems. We're working on the big spectrum of uh, companies, with a big spectrum of companies, with this military industrial complex, with state companies. And as a result, what we see is that something is invented, it might be used, uh, it might be super demanded, but this blocking that occurs because the results of intellectual activity has been registered in 10 million rubles were was spent, and the owner of this patent and uh, the owner of this intellectual activity does not have the right to take this. There's such a problem, and we it can be honest here that so universities and institutes are not good patent holders because according to, under the law, uh, the law, uh, the laws are such, and the KPI in the universities uh, are something somewhat different, and it's they don't want to hold those patents and their balance, and this is such a problem. It, it concerns less the corporate sector, but we, when we talk about academy, academy, academy of sciences, and universities, small. Well, I want to add something to what Ch how Chinese the Chinese do it. I went to uh, a, some laboratory in China. They had said to me that it was 30 percent. And how many people? 30 students. But what's the mechanic? Uh, you, you go and open the magazine, Nature magazine, and there's machine teaching, learning technology. Every article has been is copied, and you uh, apply for a patent. This copying copied article, and they have uh, made uh, 30 and five get patents at this already. Can they learn how to write those patents? That's a good result, by the way. Thank you. Let's uh, answer some final questions. I have kept the audience waiting for four minutes more. Okay. All right. If there are no more questions, uh, I think it's been we have had a very lovely discussion. And special gratitude to the speakers for the interest com comments made by them. Thank you for your staying with us. And we will see you next year. Thank you all. Come to the other conferences, participate in the other conferences. Thank you.